It would have been exciting to open a franchise selling radios in the 1940s. And it would have been tempting to get to work putting the business together before the franchise agreement came through, just to be ready to hit the ground running. But what would happen if the franchise didn't materialize? A businessman in Goodman versus Dicker got to find out. Goodman was a distributor for Emerson Radio and Phonograph Corporation. With Goodman's encouragement, Dicker applied for a dealer franchise to sell Emerson products. Goodman assured Dicker that Dicker would be granted a franchise and would receive an initial order of 30 to 40 radios. Dicker hired salesmen and started soliciting radio orders from customers. Alas, no radios arrived. And after a while, Goodman reported that Dicker wouldn't be getting a radio franchise after all. Dicker sued Goodman for breach of contract. Goodman argued that it shouldn't be liable because even if Dicker had been granted a franchise, that wouldn't have guaranteed Dicker anything. The franchise would have been terminable at will. It wouldn't have imposed a duty on the manufacturer to sell Dicker any set number of radios. If the manufacturer had canceled the contract, neither Goodman nor the manufacturer would have been liable for Dicker's expenses in getting ready for business. The trial court held that Dicker hadn't proven the existence of a contract. Nevertheless, Goodman's statements and behavior had caused Dicker to take action in reliance on Goodman's representations. Goodman was thus stopped from denying the existence of a contract. The court awarded Dicker $1,500 in damages, which covered Dicker's $1,150 in cash outlays and loss of $350 in anticipated profits. Goodman appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. 